Today is the first Thursday of the month. What we always do on the first Thursday is open up my elephant book. Eating an elephant, write your life one bite at a time, and we see what we can find. Today's focus is on a bite near the end of the book. It's not one of the most exciting topics around, but it is an important topic that will convince people you know what you're doing in the world of grammar and punctuation. Hi, my name is Patricia Chapontier and welcome to episode 77 of the Life Writers blog where you can find inspiration and useful tips to help you write your life stories. We are going to flip past the 181 previous bites in eating an elephant and land on bite number 182, comma splice. A comma splice is something I should have learned long before I actually did. When I was learning to write in high school, corrections and the words comma splice were written all over my page in Ms. Gilbert's red pen. For some reason, I didn't get what I did to create a comma splice and what to do to fix it. I'm sure she explained it to me and the class multiple times, but it was one of those grammar rules that never found a home in my brain. It wasn't until much later in my writing life I got it. And I don't think I've allowed a comma splice to sneak into my writing ever since. For starters, what is a comma splice? It involves a comma, one of the most incorrectly used and misunderstood pieces of punctuation in the English language. A comma is great for a lot of things, but it's not good for holding two independent or main clauses together. An independent clause is a fancy phrase for a sentence. To be a sentence, a clause has to have a subject and a verb. That's it. It doesn't have to have any other words to make it a sentence. If I said, I ran, I slept, I cooked, all of those are complete sentences, also called independent clauses. Now, a comma splice occurs when you use a comma to hold together two independent clauses. A comma is not strong enough to connect two complete sentences. It's just a little squiggly thing. A comma doesn't carry enough weight to pull that off. When you try to make the lowly little comma join two complete sentences, you end up with a comma splice. Let's look at a couple examples from bite number 182 in Eating an Elephant. One is, we listen to Cajun music, comma, we dance the two-step. We listen to Cajun music, comma, we dance the two-step. Based on what you just learned about the comma splice, would you say this sentence is grammatically correct? No. It's not. If that's how you answered, you were absolutely correct. That comma trying to hold those two complete sentences together creates a comma splice. There are several ways to correct a comma splice. You can separate the two independent clauses with a semicolon. A semicolon is strong enough to hold those two complete sentences together. If we write, we listen to Cajun music, semicolon, we dance the two-step. That is a grammatically correct sentence. Another way to correct the comma splice is to leave the comma in place, but follow it with a conjunction, like and, or, but. Those words are conjunctions. If I say, 
we listen to Cajun music, comma, and we dance the two-step. We listen to Cajun music and we dance to two-step. That would be grammatically correct as well. Another way you can correct the comma splice is remove the comma and replace it with a period. Make this two independent sentences. We listen to Cajun music, period. We dance the two-step, period. Two complete sentences two independent clauses standing alone. Now you know everything you need to know and won't have your own version of Ms. Gilbert telling you your story has a comma splice in it. Tell us about your experience with the comma splice. Is this a punctuation problem you struggle with? Is it difficult to remember a comma is not strong enough to join two independent clauses? If you never have trouble with a comma splice, what's your secret? Tell us how you avoid that. When did you first learn about comma splices? How do you prevent them from sneaking into your stories? Tell us about your comma splice experience in the comment section below. Always remember, the only way to do this wrong is to not do it at all, especially if your work doesn't include any comma splices. Until next time, everybody, happy writing. Don't miss the next episode. Sign up to be notified of future posts and upcoming events. Use the buttons below to share this episode on social media or with a friend who might like it. If you enjoyed this week's episode, you will love our Life Writers membership. Whether you don't know where to start writing your life stories, have started and stopped many times, or have been writing but want to receive feedback to make your stories better, the Life Writers membership is where you need to be. We have a Get Started Roadmap, an extensive library of instructional videos, live events via Zoom, and a supportive and active community. If you want to take the stories that live in your heart and mind and put them into words on the page, check out Life Writers at lifewriters.us.